Hi, I'm Christian missionary Selma Ecker, and today is January 11th of 2015. Today I am going to speak to you about the subject of how much are you worth. Some people are wealthy by the world standards. Other people would say they are middle class, and many would say they are poor. But I am not speaking of material wealth or possessions. I am referring to how much you are worth in God's eyes. In the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, Jesus says in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 26, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And in chapter 10, verses 28 to 31, Jesus says, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear, fear, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. I can imagine you are thinking, of course I'm worth more than the birds. However, God cares so much for the birds, as well as all the animals he has created, that he provides food for them. Many people would say, well, that's just nature. But God is the creator of all that exists, including what we call nature. Do you have any idea of the value God places on the people he has created? We have not evolved from apes or any other creature. The value of each person God creates can only be measured in one way. That way is Jesus. The explanation for this begins with the story of Adam and Eve in the Protestant Christian Bible. Adam and Eve were the first people God created, and they lived in the Garden of Eden. It was a very beautiful place, and God provided everything for them. There was only one rule God gave them. He told them not to eat the fruit of a certain tree. They could eat everything else in the garden. If they were obedient, they would have lived forever in eternal harmony with God, as would their descendants. But after a time, they disobeyed God. The devil, Satan, also known as the father of liars, came to Eve and tempted her to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. He told her that it would be a good thing to eat the fruit. In the Protestant Christian Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, Now the serpent... Satan was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Their disobedience is known as original sin, for it was the first sin ever committed. The sin separated them from their perfect relationship with God. The separation is known as spiritual death. The sin brought both physical and spiritual death. No, they did not die immediately. The Protestant Christian Bible says that Adam lived 930 years. But if they had been obedient to God, they would never have died. This original sin is passed on to every person who is born. God has a way for every person in the world to be free from original sin 
also known as the sin nature that we are born with. That way is Jesus. The value God places on you and me is the life of his son Jesus. He loves you and me so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sins. There is no way that we can atone for our own sins. We can never be good enough or do enough good works to get into heaven. Jesus came to earth as a man and lived a perfect sinless life. Then he willingly gave his life on the cross, the perfect sacrifice required by God the Father to atone for our sins. However, this does not mean that everyone automatically gets to go to heaven. Many people believe that God is the Father of everyone. This is not true. God is the Creator of all, but He is the Father of only those who are spiritually born again. In the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, Jesus said to the religious leaders, in the book of John 8 verses 44 to 47 you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him when he lies he speaks his native language for he is a liar and the father of lies yet because I tell the truth you do not believe me can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Jesus was saying, if you are not spiritually born again, then God is not your father, but Satan is. I remember how shocked I was when I first learned this truth. Many people don't even believe that the devil, or Satan, is real. Most of those who do believe he is real would never think he is controlling their lives. But there is no middle ground. There is a war going on over your soul if you are not born again. Satan wants you to go to hell with him. Hell was created for him and the other fallen angels. He is continually tempting and luring you to enjoy the pleasures of sin and ignore God. Many people are going to churches that are preaching false doctrines. These churches are filled with people who are soothing their consciences, thinking they are going to heaven. Beware! There is only one way to heaven. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17, says, From then on, Jesus began to preach, Repent of your sins, and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. To repent is to ask God for forgiveness for your sins, and turn away from your old life. It is com to completely yield your heart and will to Him, obeying the teachings of Jesus, the Apostles, and Evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Just as Satan is luring you to hell, God is extending His grace and mercy to you, reaching out with His arms of love, waiting for you to turn to Him. Do not think that you have done anything so bad that God will not forgive you. When you sincerely repent, there will be an inward transformation accomplished by the Holy Spirit of God. God is a triune being consisting of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all equal in power, known as the Trinity. You will not have to try to change in your own strength to please God. But when you are born again, you become a new person. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. 
and all things have become new. This is Selma Edgar, Protestant Christian Missionary.